Hey YouTubers, this is Lonnie Clark again. That's for art. I'm going to take another stab at this book. You guys will be so grateful when I finish with this fucking book. <laughs> I know you want to read it as much as me. I don't know. I'm very not inclined to do like a library thing because every time I loan out my books, I never get them back. So... Sorry, this is going to have to do, or you can pay a thousand bucks for it. So we are going to read a little bit more from our book, Population Control Through Nuclear Pollution. We are on Chapter 6. Well, should I take my glasses off and read close? I like reading with my funny glasses, you guys. So, Tragedy on the Colorado Plateau, Chapter 6. Bottom of 138. Well now, Congressman Hollyfield, is reducing the radon daughter level downward from a value capable of doubling lung cancer rate regarded by you as emotional? The action of a layman? If Mr. Wirtz's action in trying to protect the lives of uranium miners from the dreaded lung cancer is emotional, we applaud his emotional action and say we need much more emotional men in government. And we might all look forward to the day when Congress has some more emotional men who worry more about saving lives of, the, of uranium miners than keeping the price of uranium low enough to promote nuclear electricity at high human costs. High human costs. This guy didn't even fucking know what we would come into. He could have never imagined fucking Fukushima. The tragic, totally unnecessary occurrence of an epidemic of fatal lung cancer in uranium miners of the Colorado Plateau is a blot upon the development of atomic energy in the United States. But this is only the beginning of the real tragedy. When uranium is extracted from its ores, there is left millions of tons of so-called uranium mine tailings. Everyone involved in this industry knows that the radium present in the uranium ore is left behind in these trailings. Where radium ore goes, it lasts for tens of thousands of years. There will be, excuse me, it lasts for thousands of years. I'm making that up. Tens of thousands. Not really. <laughs> okay. And where radium goes, it lasts for thousands of years. And there will be radon gas and inevitable radon daughters. Those same radon daughters which produce lung cancer in the miners. Uranium mine tailings used to fill home sites. Once the uranium was extracted from such ores, the tailings, according to the Atomic Energy Commission, were no longer their responsibility. <laughs> they defined their responsibility to end when no more than a certain amount of uranium was still present. Hmm. Very convenient. Who did worry about these uranium mine ta tailings with their still present poisonous radium content? Apparently, no one worried very seriously because some enterprising contractors were able to obtain these tailings as a cheap fill to be used in the housing and developments in Grand Junction, Colorado and elsewhere. Homes were built with these tailings. No one knows precisely how many homes, but estimates range in the neighborhood of about 3,000 or more. Radon gas escapes from such tailings into the homes built upon them, and then the inhabitants breathe the radon gas plus its deadly radon daughters. And the women and children don't spend just eight, the eight hours per day in their homes that the uranium miners do in the mines. They spend 16 to 24 hours per day breathing the lung cancer producing radon daughters. Indeed, it is entirely possible for a uranium miner and his living and his family living in one of these homes constructed upon uranium mine tailings. The miner may be the safest member of the family. 
His family may get more radon daughter exposure in the home than he does in the mine. Holy fuck a bully, man. New subchapter. <laughs> Homes now being condemned due to radiation. Now remember, this is 1970. The precise magnitude of this fabulous blunder in mishandling of waste of the atomic energy industry is only slowly being unfolded. A slow leisurely program is in the is in progress to, to, to determine which homes are built upon uranium mine tailings and how high the radon and radon daughter levels are in the individual structures. Man, I bet you we could find that. We can find that. We already know that some high levels have dis we already know that some high levels have been discovered high enough to cause the homes to be condemned from future human habitation. Why is the identification of which homes present a mortal hazard proceeding slowly? In part because of human frailty. Many people have their life savings in these homes built upon uranium mine tailings. If they admit to owning such a home, the possibility exists, they feel, that the property value will plummet and their life savings will be gone. So they hope to keep silent about the fill underneath their homes, hoping to sell them before it's discovered that they have radon daughter hazard. Holy fuck. These people should not be scorned. They have been innocently victimized, exactly like the homeless. The real question is to ask where the sense of responsibility of the U.S. government is in this entire scandal. Uranium mining is at the source of the entire hazard, and the uranium mine was largely for the purpose originally of producing nuclear weapons, ostensibly, ostensibly for the defense of the people of the United States and more recently for the development of nuclear reactors for electric power generation. Since these uses of uranium were presumably for the benefit of all Americans, why are a few thousand families bearing the inhumane cost of a stupid blunder of several segments of the ent entire atomic energy complex? It is not a question of placing the blame on anyone. Rather, it is a question of the need for human compassion where neg neglect prevails. Let me repeat that. Rather, it is a question of the need for human compassion where neglect prevails. The President of the United States should long ago have declared Colorado a disaster area, victimized inadvertently by the National Atomic Energy Enterprise, and every home built on uranium mine tailings should have been measured for radon. Where radon is found, homes, the homes should have been moved or destroyed or, and the inhabitants compensated by the federal government. Anything less is sheer inhuman neglect, a product of our times. Yet we see no other disaster area, de we see no disaster area declared, and the radon daughter exposure continues. Wow. Ooh, we're at the end. This is the very last subchapter. Will radioactivity natural gas be next? Colorado, one of the gems of the one of the gems of the beauty that is America, has indeed entered the atomic era with vigor, thanks to the Atomic Energy Commission activities, plus the uranium mining industries. A few miles outside of Denver, the Rocky Flats the Rocky Flats plant of the AEC. I know exactly where that is. I passed that. I know where that is. Hmm. Okay, let's read that sentence again. A few miles outside Denver, the Rocky Flats plant of AEC handles fantastic quantities of lethal plutonium capable of producing lung cancers at doses of a millionth of a gram. Holy fuck. The plowshare enthusiasts, totally casting aside the protest of the Colorado citizens, 
have fired one of their underground nuclear bombs to, quote, stimulate, unquote, natural gas production, which gas, as related elsewhere, will be radioactive and hence poisonous. The uranium miners are dying of lung cancer and homes of unknown numbers of hum and, and homes of unknown numbers of human beings may be more of a hazard than the uranium mines because of the deadly mine trailings upon which they are built. Along with its pride is its skiing and world famous music festivals as Aspen, Colorado now now sports bumper stickers on its cars. That's one long sentence. Maybe I'm reading it wrong. Along with its pride in its skiing and world-famous music festivals at Aspen, Colorado, now, sport, now sports bumper stickers on its cars which read, Come to Colorado, the playground of the Atomic Energy Commission, possibly with an, um, a gas mask. Wow, I lived in Boulder, Colorado, and I got stuck in Junction City or wherever the dumb fuck Egypt that was that they mentioned earlier. Holy fuck. Wow. I'm sorry, you guys, but I'm blown away, and I'm going to stop there. That's the end of it. Woohoo! We finished Chapter 7. We're on Chapter 7, and now it's called Nuclear Reactors. Wow. We get to listen to how they've lied to us about that, too. That's next. Gee, can't wait, huh? Wow. I drove right past that place when I lived in Boulder, Colorado. Wow, and my Peruvian family is still there. My stepson and my stepdaughter still live there. Oh, my God. And they don't even talk to me. I don't know. Like, um, persona non grata. You know what I mean? Nunca nos hablamos. I mean, a veces in Facebook, but that's it. But holy fuck, I'm stunned. So anyways, <laughs> I am going to, uh, I'm going to call their uncle and tell them. Because I did not know that. That's news to me. I really didn't know that there was that. The uranium mine trailings, that's where they're built on. I bet you all those studies, if anybody out there wants to work, you know what, if you send me things that you want me to look up, send me an email to nutsforart at gmail because I'm a student and I go on to the library. I'm good at research. So give me things that you like and I can look them up for you maybe. I can get like um, scientific studies. We have access to the whole library of scientific studies that the university has. So, um, anyways, I'm putting that out there. Wow, that thing about Colorado at the end there blew me away with the mine trailings. I don't know how many of you have people in Colorado, but wow. Hmm. So I'll have to do a study on the cancer and the, the things that are going on there. The, the mysteries. The mystery. It's a mystery. Why? There is an increase there. It's the air. That's what it is. It's the air. It's the coal ash. No, it's the fracking. Wow, you guys. So anyways, ciao. Put your courage feet on. And I'm going to do some tapping. How can you tell? <laughs> Bye.